I will look for the book of Jonah, chapter 4. I want to talk about uh, Children's Church. We're announcing Children's Church starting today, but we're only allowing those that are ages 10 and down to go. If you're not of the age of 10 and down, come back. So if you're not 10 and under, come back. Only those that are 10 and under. Amen. 10 and under. 10 and under. 10 and under. Man, if y'all want to today, just go, they can go. They're in good hands. Miss Dee Dee is going to do. She's in charge of Children's Church. Amen. They're in good hands. They got all state. <laughs> all state. Amen. We're excited. John chapter 4, we're excited about Children's Church. Amen. Amen. Started back. Some of y'all with those little babies, I'll be excited. <laughs> Y'all free now. I'm going to see how y'all really act. <laughs> you know, because some people use their children as a means not to listen to the word or as a means to leave church early. Amen. That excuse is gone. Now we're going to see. Amen. John chapter 4. Uh, John chapter 4. I don't think we're going to read all of them. I think I might need verse 29. No, 28. But you can wait till after and then find it. I think I might need that one. <laughs> Judge chapter 4. Um, I'm going to skip around, Marissa, if that's all right with you. I want to go. I'll just let you read the whole thing. Most people don't read their Bibles anyway, do they? Just read the whole text. <laughs> John chapter 4. Marissa, start at verse 4. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sychar, near the tract of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. It was then about the sixth hour, noon. Then a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. But his disciples had gone off into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman asked him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink. But Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew about God's gift of eternal life and who it is who says, give me a drink, you would ask me instead. And he would have given you living water, eternal life. She said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with, no bucket and rope, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and who used to drink from it himself, and his sons, and his cattle also? Jesus answered her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Let church say she thirsty. She <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I give him will become in him a spring of living water, satisfying his thirst for God, welling up, continually flowing, bubbling within him to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water 
so that I will not get thirsty, nor have to continually come all the way here to draw. At this, Jesus said, go, call your husband and come back. The woman asked him, I don't have a husband. Jesus said to her, you have correctly said, I do not have a husband, but you have had five husbands. And the man you are living with is not your husband. He ain't either. You shacking. Oh he, don't, he don't belong there. You have said this truthfully. <laughs> the one that said to him, Oh, sir, I see that you are a prophet. <laughs> Our fathers worshiped on this mountain. But you Jews say that the place where one ought to worship is in Jerusalem, at the temple. Jesus replied, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom comes, when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not know what you worship. We Jews do know what we worship, for salvation is from the Jews. But a time is coming and is already here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, from the heart, the inner self, and in truth. For the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. God is a spirit, the source of life, yet visible to mankind. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. The preacher, the preacher does, not does not have, have an, appropriate an appropriate topic, topic for, today. for today. So, so he, he is going to try, is going to, try to keep it, to keep it PG-13. PG-13. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. God, we give you all praise. We give you all honor. We give you all glory. Thank you, O oh God, for your word that's about to go forth, O oh God. I surrender my will to your will. I surrender my way to your way. Have your way in this service, O oh God. Have your way in these, your people, O oh God. Speak and declare your word of truth, O oh God. O oh God, convict our spirits, convict our hearts, O oh God, so that we may align with your word, O oh God, and see great results. And Father, now in the name of Jesus, O oh God, everything in this place that does not belong here, God, has to leave now, God. And I declare that you open up the hearts of the people that are in this place, oh God. And I declare that they receive your word, oh God, oh God, like never before, oh God, with an open heart, oh God, oh God, so that the water of the word, oh God, will begin to work in their lives, oh God. Oh God, and I thank you today, oh God, that your word shall not return void. Oh God, and we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, every heart said amen. Amen. I want you to shout real loud. Say, I need a cup of water. 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 A cup of water. Good. Need a cup of water. I imagine how this particular message would start. And I came out here with the intent to start it one way, and I've seen the Lord shift it to a new direction. And that direction being uh, often after a long day, hard day's work, going throughout your entire day, you, you may eat something, you may drink something, but have you ever had a day that was just one of those days that you were just thirsty? You thought you knew what you wanted to drink, but even after you drunk that, it still did not quench the thirst. You know, I am a, I'm a big fan and a big drinker of Kool-Aid, and normally when I'm thirsty, I go home and make me a big picture of Kool-Aid, and I pour half a bag of Domino sugar because my grandma didn't use cheap sugar. You know, so we pour half a bag of Domino sugar and we would, we would make it real sweet, so sweet that if you were to mix it up and put it in the solo cup, put it in the refrigerator, I mean the freezer, 
that after you left it there a while, it would freeze and make what they call an icy cup. No. And so I love Kool-Aid so much that I would drink it, but there comes a time and a place that even when I drink Kool-Aid, as much as I love it, as much as I love tea, and as much as I love those types of drink, that there comes a time and a place to where those two types of drink just don't quench my thirst. No. And even after trying several drinks, I eventually go back to the root of all drinks, and I just drink a little water. And there's sometimes water will just hit a spot, even though it don't taste good. It don't even have a taste at all sometimes. Sometimes you add stuff to the water to give it a taste, but just natural water just does something to a thirsty person. That flavored water, carbonated water, caffeine water, coffee cannot do for a person. So I, I, I dug into my research, into my mind, and I had to find out why is it that water has the ability to renew, revive, restore, and quench a thirst that other drinks could not do. So as I looked into it, I, I found out that I found out that most things that we drink, they have additives, they have things added to them. They, they have placed a lot of things in them that we think that we need to get us through our day. For some of us, it's caffeine. For some of us, whatever it may be, it may be the flavor, it may be the sugar, whatever it may be, we think we need those things for energy. We think we need those things to stay awake. We think we need those things to make it throughout the day. But I got news for you that I found out why water is so good. It's because your body is 86% water. It's 86% water, and the fact that your body is 86% water means that when you get thirsty, you simply thirst for what you are made of. So thirsty people, when they are thirsty, you know, all manners of thirsty people, when they are thirsty, they are simply thirsty for things that they are made of. You know. You know, so if I were to venture off just for a little while, we call certain females thirsty. We call certain males thirsty. But they are only thirsty for things that they are made of. And, and they get it from their DNA. That means that their mother probably was thirsty. Or their daddy was thirsty. Or grandmama had to be thirsty. Somebody in the bloodline had to be thirsty. I guarantee you that daughter wasn't the only one in the bloodline that had a baby at 13. Check the bloodline. Grandmama was thirsty. Great grandmama was thirsty. Great daddy had a little thirsty. All of the uncles, everybody in the bloodline was thirsty. And you can only thirst for that which is on the inside. Oh, right. The only way to get rid of the thirst is to give yourself what you already have. See, you get thirsty when you're running out of that which is on the inside. Yeah, yeah. I'm preaching already real good. You become thirsty when you are right. You know how it is when women get lonely or men get lonely. Then they will settle for less. They will settle for anything. That's because they are thirsty. They have run out of the thing that they thought that they needed. And so they will go after anything to quench the thirst. Right. Come on, man. It ain't safe to drink a product that you don't understand the chemical makeup of it. That was my PG-13. It ain't safe to get in a relationship with someone and you don't understand the root of who they are. It ain't safe to, to hook up with somebody and have relations with them and you don't know the seed that they are planting and leaving in you. And then when you get in your next relationship, you can't have a successful relationship because the thirsty man, when you are a thirsty woman, that thirsty seed. How it is because when one is thirsty, one sleeps and have relations with people that they are not equally yoked with. And what happens is the thirsty man fills the thirsty woman with seeds that are empty. They do not possess the ability to fill voids that only God can fill. 
you know, you know, when a woman is thirsty, the woman in the text, they would call her thirsty. Uh -huh. She had gone through five men and she showed up at the well without the man that she's sleeping with. To carry a load that she really should be carrying in the first place. Because anytime you put water in the size of water pots that women carried back in those days, it was really too heavy for the woman to carry. So the man should have really been the one going out to get the water. But because the woman was thirsty, she had to carry a load that she was never meant to carry. How it is when folk get thirsty. So I, I found out about thirst. Let's talk just a moment about thirst. We consume toxins that give us emotional feelings that we believe we need in order to function. What do I mean? Some drink coffee. Some drink sodas. Others drink sugar water. For whatever the reason is, you drink those things because you think you need them. You know how folks get addicted to certain things. They cannot survive in their day without that drink. You know. And they don't realize the, the need for a thing that is not God to survive in a day that God created for you to use him for survival mode was never good. It's really an idol. And that just means we thirsted. Amen. I better go back to the... Ain't it funny how we will wake up and we will get a cup of coffee before we pray. We will wake up and we will drink our soda before we worship. Ain't it funny that we will go our entire day and we will consume a drink that we think is good for us, but never consume a part of the living water that can quench the thirst. Ain't it amazing that the woman showed up to a well and we have a situation here, Tan. The woman showed up to the well because she had a need for what the well could offer. Jesus was at the well not because he needed what was in the well, because he had learned how to rest on what the well contained. Oh, yeah. See, I got to stop for a second and talk about that. See, the woman showed up at the well because she needed the water. But Jesus was at the well not because he needed water, but because he had learned how to rest on the water. I'm going somewhere. Y'all just stay with me for a brief second. And so let me translate that. The water in Hebrew translation represents the word. Jesus didn't need the word because in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. And the God was the word. So Jesus was the word. He didn't need the water because the water is the word. And he was the word. So he didn't need what was in the well. He was what the well contained. So he learned how to rest. And what the well contained. And the woman needed what was in the well. But didn't realize she had another well leaning on the well. Ain't it amazing how folk would show up at church with different needs? The woman needed water. Jesus needed to rest. Some of y'all come in here with all of the needs that you have. And everybody in here got a different need. I don't know what the need is. But we all show up to the well with a different need. Now the question is, when you show up to the well, Jonathan, is the size of the pot that you have according to the need. You know, when you show up to a well, depending on the size of the pot, will determine how much water you get. Right. And you know, folks show up to the well, I mean the church. They show up to the well, I mean to, to worship service. They show up to the well, and all of you got different size pots. Ain't it amazing that folk will show up to the same place that have the ability to get the same amount of something, but folks will still have different expectations and come in with smaller things? You know, she showed up with a pot that could not contain what the well had to offer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me talk about the text just for a second before I go deeper. Let the church say water. Water. In chapter 1, 
Jesus was the son of God. In chapter 2, Jesus was the son of man. In chapter 3, Jesus was the divine teacher. In chapter 4, Jesus was the fill in the blank. Well, somebody will catch that on the way home. In chapter 1, he was the son of God. In chapter 2, he was the son of man. In chapter 3, he was the teacher. In chapter 4, he was the fill in the blank. Because when he met the woman at the well, he was going to have the ability to fill a void that she, y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. And a lot of you have come in here today in order for God to meet a need, but you don't even realize what the real need in your life. But God said, I come today to fill the blank. So I said, God, tell me a little bit about the text. In the text, I want y'all to see this. Go to verse 9, Marissa. Let's talk about this story in a messy way. Because <laughs> y'all will go to sleep if I don't be messy just a little bit. Here we go. Read it. The Samaritan woman asked him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew about God's gift of eternal life and who it is who says, give me a drink, you would have asked him instead. Watch this, y'all. She says, why are you going to ask me for some water? You know you don't fool me like that. Huh? You don't mess with me like that. Huh? You don't talk to me for real and got the nerve to ask me for some water? You know. <laughs> you know, huh? Jews don't fool with Samaritans. Uh -huh. Huh? She got enough sense to know that he's a Jew without him telling her. Yeah. So that means she know her men. Y'all ain't gonna see I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stay ready PG, I told you. See, 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 she she had a profession, but her profession wasn't the type of profession you clock in on a regular job for. She knew, y'all don't want, she knew the job that she did very well. She knew that job. And Jesus said, uh-huh, yeah, you got the ability to know the type of man I am. That's why you know not to have the conversation you would normally have with a different man. Oh, y'all. Oh, just getting quiet right on through here. And see, the problem is, a lot of women, even in here today, they're having the wrong conversation with the wrong men. Right. And when the right men show up, they don't know how to have the right conversation. Yeah. Come here, somebody. I wish I could have just about nine people in here. And then the right man show up because he don't share it. Or he's not strong enough, or he's too weak, and that's not. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. And the fact of the matter is, he's not a weak man. You're just a thirsty woman that don't know how to recognize a strong man when you see him. I wish I could find it. Can I get a witness right there? And see, the problem is, a lot of thirsty women come to church and want God to play hookup because they've been dealing with the whole thing. I don't want to hear what I'm saying. And they have not learned how. Jesus said, you're smart enough to know my type. For you to say, I ain't got no business fooling with you. And he said, I'm right. I'm not going to fool with you in that manner. Because I already know it's somebody at your house that don't belong there. I wish I could find a woman like that. Uh, it's some folk in here got some folk at your house right now that don't belong there. Ain't it a shame that you would let a Negro sleep at the house while you go to work and get the needs of the house and you go and get the water and you bring it back and that joker on the couch and they get to work all day. And see, there's a problem in the text because the woman was going to get the needs of the house to supply a non-working man. Showed up for work yep, yep. and she met Jesus yep, yep, yep. 
And guess what he was? He was the right man, but he was the one that created the water. She said, you at the house with a Negro that don't even get unemployment when you have met a man that started the company. Which I divide about. I said, that's the law. Can't get no amen from there. Can't get no amen. Because we will settle for a satisfied pleasure that is only temporal. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. And that's why some of us get beat up and that's why some of us get cussed out. Because we are selling for a man when we think we know our time. When actuality, you don't know your type. Because if you knew your type, you wouldn't question the type of man that Jesus was. Right. 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 So at the well, she says, you don't even fool with me like that. Yeah. She said, you're right. All fool with thirsty women. Yeah. <laughs> because if you at this well get water for the house, I already know you got the wrong mindset. <laughs> And the fact that I know, she said, come here. She said, well, where your husband at? She said, I ain't got no husband. He said, I knew that before I told you. I just was going to see what you going to say. He said, she said, oh, he, Jesus said, okay, but I want to talk about that man that's at your house in the bed. That at least he could do if you're going to come out and get the water, he could cook breakfast. I can't get no amen like that. But at least he could do it. You're going to go out and work. He can have the house clean. But you let that Negro sleep in the house and you make it home. He ain't even got up and cleaned up nothing. He ain't cooked that. Can't even pay the bill. And you're going to keep feeding that Negro. What in the world is going on? You just thirsty and don't realize you met a man that can feel the thirst. But the men that can feel the thirst are no longer the women's type. Yeah. Okay. That can't take too much more than anything. Let me keep going. I want y'all to see something in the text. She said, you don't even fool with me like that for real. But watch this. She said, how you gonna get some water and you ain't got nothing to draw with? Wait a bridge. I want you to I want y'all to see this. What y'all see? Put up verse 9 again. Then the woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone off into the city to buy food. I want you to stop. Jesus made sure that he knew that she had a man or a men problem. Jesus was so smart that he waited and made sure that the disciples, who were all men, were not there to be a distraction. So he made sure that they were in town so that when she met the Christ, that he, she could just concentrate fully on him. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? And see, the problem is, a lot of us, our boyfriends got us distracted Huh? And they're never meant to be your husband in the first place. And God is trying to hook you up with the right man so you can finally get in your rightful place so he that finds a good wife will find a good man. But the reason why the right man can't find the right woman is because the right woman is still thirsting after the wrong man so she's in the wrong place at the wrong time. And while the right man is still going on his righteous life, you're never in the place you're supposed to be so he can find you. She said, read verse 11. Put up verse 11, Marissa. She said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with. No bucket and rope. He said, you ain't got, you ain't got nothing to draw with. She said, see, when you started the company, it's no longer for you to work like that. When you created this, you don't have to work as hard. Then he says to her, watch this. He says to her, why are you judging my ability to get what I need based upon what I have? That's real good. You put that on Facebook. So he says, watch this. The woman started judging Jesus' ability to get water simply because he didn't have a tool that she had. And God said that's what a lot of folks do in the church. They're sitting here right now, and some of them are judging some of y'all based upon what you don't have and they are judging where you are based upon what you don't have 
all realize that they have shown up to a place trying to use a tool that they don't need. Wow. Okay, wait a minute. Let me show you something. And he says that she is judging him so she can throw off on what she's already doing wrong. So she says, you ain't even got nothing to draw with at the church. Say, you ain't got nothing to draw with. Yeah. I know that ain't right grandma, but that's all right. Y'all understand. You don't even have something to get the water out with. Now watch this. I want you to go over to verse number 12. Read that. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well? And, you, and he used to drink from it himself and his sons and his cattle also. Jesus answered her. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. I want y'all to see something. So in the midst of the conversation, can I teach this just for a second? Oh, teach it, teach it. He's talking about, the lady says, you at Jacob's well. Yeah. He said, you act like you're telling me something I didn't know. But why was it significant that she said that you at Jacob's well? Because she was trying to tell him about the place. And so I got to stop for a second and talk about the place. They was in Samaria. Mm -hmm. And in verse number one, Jesus said, I must need go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. And so they were in Samaria. Now watch this. Samaria is a place that was founded or started by Jezebel's dad. Wow. Everybody know who Jezebel is, right? Yeah. Je everybody know Jezebel, you know. Huh? Jezebel's Husband's name was Ahab. Who watched it? Jezebel's daddy's name was Ithbel. Ithbel. Her name was Jezebel. Her daddy's name was Ithbel. And they started the worship of Baal. That's why their name ended in Baal. So Samaria is a place that they worshiped idol gods. So when she's talking about a place, She's trying to tell him, you showed up in a place that you don't even understand. And Jesus said, no, you don't understand where you are because before Baal showed up, I was already here. So I said, God, I said, what is the importance of that? He said, tell him. He said, because Jezebel and Ahab's father, Ithbel, developed a culture in Samaria that had taken God out of the equation. Yeah. But watch this. Yet they went to church every Sunday and Wednesday and worshiped somebody, but it wasn't God. Yeah. All right. That's why he said later on in the text, and now the hour cometh and the time is that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in what? Yeah. Watch this, y'all. I want y'all to see something. Go over to verse number 22. Put that Jesus, over. Jesus replied, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom comes, when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not know what you worship. We Jews do know what we worship. For salvation is from the Jews. Right. Read the next one. And I'm, I'm going to speed on to the close of the end. Go. But a time is coming and is already here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, from the heart, the inner self, and in truth. Stop. Read it again. But the time is coming and is already here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. Spirit. In spirit, let the church say in spirit. In spirit. And what? From the heart. From the heart. The inner self. And in truth. So you got to worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. That means that if your spirit ain't got no truth to it, you ain't in worship for real. Amen. Okay, that, I'm going to break it all down so you can understand what I'm saying. So when he says in spirit, that means that worship is a matter of the heart. Let the church say heart. Right. If your heart is not in the right place, then your worship will not be right. And if your heart is in the wrong place, then that speaks to the relationship that the person has with God. Watch this. So this means that when she showed up to the way, I mean, when she showed up to church, 
her heart was not in the right place. So that means when she got ready to worship Jesus, she couldn't worship him for real because her heart was with a different man at home. Y'all see this? Watch this. So I say, God, explain to him a little bit better. So he says, true worship must be in spirit. Let the church say in spirit. in spirit. What does in spirit mean? In spirit means you are engaging your whole heart. Let the church say whole heart. Whole heart. Unless there is a real passion for God, there is no worship in spirit. Unless there is a real passion for God, there is no worship in spirit. That's why folk will sit there and when worship stops, they will have been in worship. But when worship stops, they stop because they have no passion for God. Because if you have a passion for God, when the music stops, your heart keeps worshiping. He says, watch this. He says, when, 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 when your heart ain't right, then you can't worship for real. And if your heart's jacked up, then you can't never get in the spirit. If your heart jacked up, you can't get in the spirit. That means if your heart is hurt or you are very emotional, your heart has been broken, then your heart got so much stuff going on that it can never get in worship. So then that's why God has to deal with the heart first before you can even get in worship. And a lot of times that's why some of you can't even worship God. It's because your heart is jacked up and because so many folks have damaged your heart and done your heart wrong that when you come here, you try to worship, but you can't because you got too much stuff going on. On the inside. Watch this. So he says that they must worship him. In spirit, say in spirit. In spirit. Watch this, this jack me up. It said in spirit and true. Yeah. What does that mean? In spirit and true. So I said, okay. I looked up the word truth. And truth means to be properly informed. Okay. It means to be properly informed. So truth means your worship has to be properly informed as to the reason why you are there. This means that you have to tell your heart the reason why you are showing up for church. And when you don't properly inform your heart as to why you are coming in the first place, then you can never get in worship or praise because you have, your heart is not properly informed. Watch this. And see, this is why there are folk that can be going through hell, but they can still worship God because they have trained their heart and informed their heart. I don't care, baby, what you're going through. I don't care what you got going on, but you're going to lift up your hands and worship God. Why? Because God has done too much for you. But you just sit down on it now. So I got to inform my heart on my shoulder. Watch this, watch this. So he says, you got to train your heart. You got to give your heart information that it don't have in your current situation. What does that mean? Your heart is hurting, but your mind got to tell your heart, I know you got a lot going on, but baby, if you lift your hands, I tell you what God did for you the last time, he gonna get ready to do it again. I wish I could just find somebody. Baby, if you just look back over all the stuff that he does, I know you going through hell right now, but guess what? Six years ago, you were going through hell, and he did it then. He don't do it again. So you got to inform your heart that I don't care what you got going. You got to know this is the truth. See, 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 it, 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 it threw me off jazz because I thought folk that came to church were crazy. And they didn't know God. And then Sam, he told me, he said, it ain't that. Because folk that showed up, they wanted to show up because they needed something from the well. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, most folk that showed up to the well, they hadn't talked to their heart yet. Y'all, 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 somebody, man, that's, 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 watch this. So he says, he says, watch this. So you wake up in the morning and your heart got a lot of stuff going on. You can't even get, you can't even thank the Lord. Can't even pray to God. You got so much going that you don't even know what to say to him. He said, but then your mind had 
have to tell your heart that guess what? You don't love God because you love God. You love God because he loved you. Somebody hear me. Watch this. I don't show up to worship just because I love him so much. I show up to worship because I have to remind myself he loved me so much. So I cannot not show up. You know what I'm saying? Because even when I don't want to come, I still got to go. Why? Because he loved me. So I got to inform myself. So he says, he says you got to inform your heart of how you're going to tap into worship. He said the real reason why the church hadn't found true worship yet is because we don't like to talk to ourselves. And maybe I have mastered the concept of talking to myself and folks say I'm crazy and I've learned to talk back. And some of y'all ain't gonna tell the truth, but y'all done the same thing. There have been times you didn't want to go to work, but your mind had to tell your heart, get up, baby. You got to go and make that bread, because if you don't, you're gonna eat spam sandwiches this week and next week, and your life, you got to learn how to talk to yourself, and yourself got to talk back. Y'all hideous, 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 hideous hope because if you don't make yourself get up and go to work, then you inform yourself that you won't have no money to pay your bills. So you have to properly inform yourself of the reason why you clock in every day. This is the same thing you got to do every Sunday. You remind yourself, even when you don't want to clock in the church, the reason why you must clock I wish I'm trying to find about two or three witnesses because he said to me, he said, see, he said, tell your heart. He said, you ain't got to tell your heart nothing else but this thing. Watch this. Watch this. You are really here because of his love for you. See, see, you wouldn't even know love if love didn't love you first. And when you experience the love of God, which is the same love that brought Jesus to the cross, this same love kept Jesus on the cross. Oh, y'all watch this. Watch this. This is what blew my mind. That same love worked in Christ while he was going through something for you that you couldn't go through for yourself. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus got beat up for something you were going to do that you should have been punished for, but he took the punishment on your behalf, even though, guess what, you hadn't even been born yet. So he loved you so much so that he would do something for you so you didn't have to pay the price for it. Then, in the midst of being on the cross, Listen, it blew my mind when I saw this picture of the cross. Then after being on the cross, love is so much love. I mean, God. God is so much love. I mean, love is so much love because God is love. Love is so much love. God is so much love that he was on a cross for you. And there were two other people on a different cross. And he decided to take them home with him. And he had just met them. Y'all will read y'all Bible to you. The Bible says that there was two thieves on the cross, and one of the thieves looked at him and said, Just when you get home, just invite me to your house. And the Lord said, Guess what? When I get there, you're going to be there with me. And even though the thief didn't deserve it, the love of Christ brought him to his house where he didn't deserve it. I said, so so tell me what you're saying. He said, the people got to learn how to convince their heart the reason why they show up to church. And the reason why you show up is not for a house, it's not for a car, but it's to give thanks that love did not die. Y'all don't really hear what I'm saying. It is to give God thanks that love always prevails and love always covers a multitude of sin. Why? Because some of y'all seen it last night. And two days ago, and three days ago, and some of y'all are the biggest Christians and the biggest Holy Ghost field folk, but you're still messing up. And guess what? If love was not in operation, then God would have killed you in your sin. And because love is so good, love decided to spare you when you still didn't want to get right. I can't get no witness right there. we've been doing for years, and guess what love does? Love st still keeps loving the hell out of you. Y'all can't get no amen right there. Some of y'all still fighting and cussing and fussing and still being disobedient, but guess what love still does? Love still keep on loving you. Love still keeps on doing for you, and love keeps, still keeps on blessing you when you don't even show up. After all that he 
has done for you. And then you will sit there and not worship him as he still loves you. And you still walk out of here and he'll still bless you. And you haven't opened your mouth yet. I ain't love to it. I wish I could do just one witness right there. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I inform my heart of why I come to worship. So I show up to church after I have talked to my heart and said, you won't get in there, fold your arms. You won't get in there and sit on that seat. Love has been too good to you. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? Love has been too good for you to sit in there and think about what somebody else don't think about your worship. The devil is a lie. You better start talking to your heart. Love spared your life for being in that wreck where you should have died. Love kept some of y'all from being STDs and being drunk and being without a job. Some of y'all love kept you from getting fired. I wish I could just find somebody that could be a witness right now. And some of y'all are still hell with, but love still keep on loving you. That we won't even lift our hands and worship the love that loves us despite all. There's a woman who has showed up to a place where what you're trying to get at the house, you can never get from him what you can get from me. But you will sit there and not acknowledge, because if you knew who I was for real, Jesus says, if you knew who I was, you would be having a different conversation. And see, that's how you know the folk in the church that know it for real, because they will be sitting there, and everybody else will be sitting down, and they'll be sitting there talking to God. God, I just thank you. God, I love you. God, you did not have to do it. God, don't nobody know I ain't have a $15 this week, but I drove all week, and I was able to get gas, and I ate lunch every day, and I had a good day. Watch this. 
Read it, Bridget. I'm, 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 I'm finished. But a time is coming, and it's already here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, from the heart, the inner self, and in truth. For the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. Say, so he's looking for them. Yeah. He's looking for the ones that's going to wake up on Sunday yeah. and tell yourself, I don't care how you feel. I don't care what life looks like. But you're going to get up and you're going to go and worship the one that loved you despite of what you did. Yeah. And, you know, in that house. Huh? and so you're going to properly inform yourself of why you show up to church every Sunday. Yes, I need a new house. Yes, I need a new car. Yes, I need more money. But I ain't showing up for that. If I get that, that's a blessing. But I'm showing up to show love. I don't want to hear I'm showing up. Watch this. Put up, Marissa. And I want you, I want to, I'm going to end right here with this. And you can stand if you want to. What happened when she accepted love? I mean, she got the right cup of water. Because she had a water pot. But Jesus told her, if you drink of me, you ain't going to never be thirsty again. If you drink of me, you'll only need one cup. You won't need that water pot no more. Because after you get this drink today, it's going to be more than enough. Marissa, put up verse number, the one I told you I might need. 28. Then the woman left her water jar and went into the city and began telling the people, Come see a man who told me all the things that I have done. I want to show you two things in this text that I've done. The man that she had at the house, she was no longer thinking about him anymore. Because when she met the right man, it caused her to forget about the wrong When you meet the right thing, and you find the right job, and you find the right person in your life, it'll make you forget about everything that was ever wrong. I wish I could find a witness right there. And she went in the town. The Bible didn't say she went back to the house. The Bible says she went around and started telling folks what she had just got. Baby, you don't need no water pot. You don't need no big picture. All you just need is one cup. Yeah. So, so the Bible say, what did she do? She went and started telling the people, come see a man who told me all the things that I have done. Can this be the Christ, the Messiah? The anointed? I want y'all to see something. In the early part of the text, she told the woman, the woman said to Jesus, okay, I want some of your water. He said, okay, if you want some of my water, go and get your, your husband, that man that's at the house, and bring it back to me. <laughs> if you really want some of my water, you go and get that thing that's at the house that's wrong, and you bring the wrong thing to me. Watch this. When she was willing to sacrifice the wrong thing for the right thing, she stepped into a season of what she needed. It was already provided before she asked for it. How do I know? She was showing up daily to get water. That means she had no water at home. But that that she was using to supply her house with something that she needed daily, she left it at the well. That means that what she needed, the lack that she had, it was already at the house. That means that when she accepted the Christ and what he had to offer, everything that she could ever ask him for, he had done it for at the house. So there was no need to go back home because she knew that it was already done. that she met Jesus, the limits fell off. And that means everything that she expected or ever asked for, she stepped into a new paradigm that said God can give me more than that. So what does she do when she finds out that there's more to God and he can give me more than that? She drops her water pot and says, I don't need that ain't even big enough no more. And God says, some of y'all, when y'all meet Jesus for real, you gonna step into a season and say, that ain't even big enough. That house right there, that ain't even big enough. That car right there, that ain't even good enough. That child right there, I ain't even making enough money. Huh? Because God got more for me when I step into the knowledge of who I am in Christ. Isn't 
know that I deserve more than what I have, not because I'm special, but because love loves me. Ain't it good to know that love loves you? And even when you can't find love around you, there's always a love that's willing to love you with all your faults. With all, that's good right there. I don't care how jacked up you think your life is. I don't care how bad of things you thought you have done. Guess what? Love got so much love that don't even matter. And if truth be told, and we air all of the business of the people in the room, you might not think you've done all that bad yourself. Huh? Because love has the ability to cover a multitude. Ain't it good y'all sitting there, sitting here today and I don't even know half the stuff you've done? Amen. Because if I did, some of y'all wouldn't even show up to worship. Amen. And I know you don't fool with Samaritans. But today, God says that he is going to anoint you for a season to fool with people that you didn't fool with before. The ones that you said, they don't fool with you and you don't fool with them. God is getting ready to allow them to come around and ask for something. And you're going to say in your mind, oh, you don't fool with me like that. And then God going to remind you of this word. Because God said, I'm dropping an anointing to fool with things that don't like to fool with you. Because when you do that, he's going to afford you an opportunity to offer them a water that they need. Because they simply thirsty. And we will learn to stop being offended by thirsty people. We're standing all over the building. I'm done. We're lifting our hands.